to our video series on the artistry of bird carving with carver and artist Paul Phillips. In this episode, Paul shows off his completed black duck decoy and talks about the different kinds of decoys he has made over the years. Well, here it is, finally finished. Uh, I've got all the painting done on it and uh, as you can see, a black duck, female, even more than the male, is well camouflaged. And it's for a purpose, so she can protect her nest. Uh, you can, you can, if you have to really look at these, that there's a lot of detail in them. And it's very dark, hence the name black duck. From a distance, when you see these ducks on the water, they look all black, except for a little bit lighter head. The female has a green bill, which this is, and uh, the male has a more of a yellow bill. And uh, that's about the only difference between the two. And um, under side is just a, a quick coat of paint. You don't have to bother with the underside. Just cover it maybe once over the primer because you'll never see that. And uh, it's, it's, it's done. I'm happy with it. And I'll just sort of turn it around so you can see it from all sides. Here's a front view. There's the port side. There's the stern. And there's the starboard side. That's the way I like to say it because they are something that floats in the water and you have to make them seaworthy so they don't fall in, fall over. And this is a standard working decoy. There's no frills, as opposed to, let's say, this one. There's a lot of additions on this. It's got the wing tips coming out. It's got the turned head. And uh, this would not be as utilitarian, is a good word, I guess, as, as the one that we've finished here. And uh, it takes a lot longer to do these. This is, a, I think, in the fr our first talk, we, I mentioned something about the amount of time it takes to, uh, to make one of these. This is a, a true 85 hour for me. Uh, maybe other carvers can do it in less time. But I like to take my time and uh, make sure it's done right. On the other hand, the standard decoy, this one that we just finished, that's around a little over 50 hours, 50, 52 hours it took to make that one. And uh, this is another example of halfway between a working decoy and a mantle bird. What I mean by mantle bird is decorative. You could use this for hunting. You could use this one for hunting, but it would, I think it'd be a waste because eventually they're gonna get bird shot in them. And uh, also, I make shorebirds. This is a wimbrel. It's balanced. It's got legs and, and toes. And uh, these, if they were a true working decoy, would not have all this fancy leg and, and stand, everything. It would just be a dowel. It goes right at the balance point on, underneath in the center of the body. You just stick it in the sand. And uh, that's all you have to do with them. When, when they're being transported, the stick is taken off the body and, and just packed away. There are examples I've seen of beautiful little wooden shorebirds, different varieties. The body is cut right in half lengthwise. 
opened up, hollowed out, and then hinges, little hinges are put on it so that you can close it back together. The reason why it's hollowed out like that, that's where the bill goes when you're transporting it and also the, the stick goes inside the body so you don't lose them. And there's a little latch on the top. And that's a, a pretty, pretty uh, I'd say, popular way of uh, making shorebird decoys in Orleans here on Cape Cod. A lot of the, a lot of the commercial hunters would, would uh, do that kind of um, construction. And this one over here is an example of an upland sandpiper. It's kind of strange why they call it a sandpiper because the upland sandpiper does not really hang around the shore at all. It's upland. It's up in the, the meadows above the shore and it likes to perch on a high point. I have here uh, just an example of maybe a, the top of a post. They like to, they like to uh, get off the ground as much as possible and they're looking for stuff to eat. It's crawling around on the, in the grass and everything. And that's where they hang out. But they do, uh, they do migrate over the shore, I mean down the, the, the coastline and they're considered a sandpiper. Just to show you what's here, these are all ones that I've made. This is a female mallard. This is the male mallard. And um, they have that camo effect, camo, camouflage effect, which is necessary for not being seen by predators while they're sitting on their nests and protecting their brood. And they're all hollow, every one of them. That is the preference of many duck hunters. They prefer these the old time, in the old times when they made them out of wood, like these, solid bodies were heavy. And uh, they found that if they could get the, the, the maker to carve them out, carve out the insides, it's a lot easier to transport them whatnot and it also makes them more buoyant and I think as I've explained before the, the hollowness of, of the decoy it's, cre it's a void created on the inside of the body there's no wood contracting or expanding so there's less chances for the actual body of the decoy to crack open because there's no expansion and contraction there's nothing going on it's void and here's a canvas back, good eating duck. This is, this is a very preferable duck for the table. They like wild rice, wild celery, things like that. That's their favorite food. And this here is the very first decoy I ever made. This is number one. I'm at about 135 now, somewhere around there. And uh, it's a lot heavier, but it is hollow because I can hear something in there rattling around. So I started making these hollow from the very beginning. Yep, even has my signature on the bottom. can barely read it, but it's there. This came to me all the way from um, Oregon. That's where it ended out with its, its owner. But uh, he's gone now, and the family asked me if I'd like to have it back. And I said, yeah, I would. I'd like to have the first one I ever made. So they mailed it to me, and here it is. Thank you for joining us for part four of our video series on the artistry of bird carving as we journey through the process of carving and painting a decoy. 
You can watch painting and carving demonstrations in the Elmer Kroll Barn Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, July through October. For more information about the Harwich Historical Society, the Brooks Academy Museum, and the Elmer Kroll Barn, visit us at www.harwichhistoricalsociety.org.